Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs and welcome to the first part of our Hope Quilt Along. I am so excited that you're here with us today. I think hope is in the air. We're all excited to spend the day together and have some fun quilting, aren't we? Welcome everybody. I, I'm humbled about the amount of people that have joined us and extremely, extremely proud of all of what we have raised in such a short time. So first and foremost, I wanna give you an update on how much money we have raised for my charities we are over $33,000. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, quilters are so generous. So I think we are the best people in the world, of course. So this is something I'm extremely proud of and we are still counting. I see people are catching on still and still making purchases on the pattern. So that is a fabulous thing. So we were hoping to, you know, that number to tick, keep ticking up over the course of the day and hopefully tomorrow as well. Plan is to give out the money this coming Tuesday. I want to get the money out to the community and get it working, uh, but we may still keep the donations open for another uh, giveaway later. But um, welcome those of you that are completely new to our quilt alongs. This is our second one, a quarantine quilt along where we do a quilt in a day, of course. It's all up to you if you are going to quilt the whole thing today, but you know, main goal of the day should be having fun, no stress. This is why we want to keep it fun and moving. We have a playlist for you. If you need some fun music, I picked songs that kind of keep you moving, keep you maybe singing along. I tried to have a lot of variety and generations and things, but these songs are all songs that spoke to me. So I hope you like that. Now, this video, of course, will be available after we are off the air live. So I'll be going live five times throughout the day. This is just the first session. And so what this is about, we want you just to watch and kind of follow along the demonstration. I'm gonna demonstrate the pattern and, and chat. We're gonna have a little Q&A afterwards, but take this as a demonstration and you're not meant to cut along or sew along with what I am doing. So just watch, make notes, and then after the fact, the videos are saved both on YouTube and on Facebook, and you can just go back and watch the parts that you wanna re, kind of review again. So how to find them, how to find the videos after the fact, because as we are live, you're not gonna be able to kind of rewind the videos while we're still live. So after we go off the air, uh, a best place to go find all the links is of course my blog. So you go to the website, gequiltdesigns.com, you find the blog button and there's a specific post for our Hope Quilt Along with all of the links. It also has a link to the playlist, uh, Spotify playlist, and some recipes that I have posted that I know some of you already made uh, and are all prepped for the day. So that's very, very exciting. Of course, if you're new to our My Live sessions as well, please post um, in the comments where you're tuning in from. We have people from all over the world. I am amazed at uh, you in, uh, I've, I saw comments from Hawaii. It's 4 a.m. in Hawaii. So welcome, welcome, aloha, good morning. And those that over in Europe, of course, it's the afternoon. So welcome, thank you for being here. If you are catching me from Australia, I know it's really, really late. So probably not gonna be watching until tomorrow morning, but thank you for being with me. I'm so proud to kind of bring the whole quilting community together. Now, if our reception or your Wi-Fi reception or internet reception turns bad, if we start to get spotty, don't worry, we are recording our videos, so we will post them in full length. We are staying strong. So um, if, you, if you have any issues on your end, don't worry about it. You can always go back and watch it later. Now, thank you for all the messages and the posts. It's been really great to connect. And um, I think Quilting Heels, our Elvira quilt along that happened in March was kind of, we were all kind of flabbergasted with what was going on in the world. And now we're uh, over a month later. And so we're kind of getting used to this new normal. And I think it's time to bring some hope 
This is my favorite thing to do, bringing people together and sharing in something we all love, that heal, quilting heals and uh, creating is something that um, just nourishes our soul. And to be able to do it in a way that we're giving back is just phenomenal. It's a win, 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 win. So um, my little sentence that you saw on the screen in the beginning, that you are going to receive hope. I hope you have received your hope pattern and printed it out and are ready. We're going to experience hope all day. Um, so much fun. And what is better than having hope in your heart at all times? We're going to be creating hope, literally. And then we are giving hope to others by our donations and then possibly your finished quilt. You might give that quilt away. So it's a triple, double, quadruple, uh, you know, rolling ball, which I think when you give, that's what happens. It just keeps rolling and paying it forward and paying it forward. So all is good. That's what we want to put out in the world right now. All good hope and positivity, right? Um, now, quilting has been an incredible therapy for me, but of course it is a business. So if you want to show some thanks, of course I have a web store. Um, pop in there and see if anything you like. And of course, the best way is if you share, if you like what we're doing, if you like our videos, share it with friends, share it on your pages, and just talk about what you like and what you enjoy. So then we can keep it going. So um, again, make sure to check in, make sure to comment. There's a lot of people with us. So even, you know, if you have questions, post them in the comments. I will not promise to get to them because we have a lot of people and we're going to have a lot of questions. It's hard to catch up when we're live, but I will go after we're offline. I will look for if there's any critical questions, I will try and answer them as best I can afterwards. Now we have fabulous sponsors. I have partnered with multiple fabric companies over the years and many of them have become good friends. And so they reached out to me and wanted to be a part of it. So we have fabulous giveaway prizes from uh, four fabric companies. We have Free Spirit, Moda Fabrics, May Wood Fabrics, and P&B Fabrics that are all supporting us today with amazing prizes of fabric that we will be drawing random names from your comments, from the live comments, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So uh, that is fabulous and thank you so much. And then GE Designs will throw in a few gift cards as well. So that will be fun. So after towards the end of each live session, we will pull those random names and um, announce them right then and there. Now again, make sure you hop onto the blog to find anything else you need. So later on the segment, not in this particular one, we're going to have some live guests joining me. So if you have any questions for those folks, make sure to think them up and, and jot them down. So the amazing guests that I have joining me are all friends of mine in the quilting industry that we've known each other for years. So I'm excited to have a virtual meetup and chat. So the first one is Nancy Jewell. She works for Free Spirit Fabrics and uh, the Jaftax Corporation. She has been in the industry for decades. I'm, it'd be fun to see exactly how many years Nancy has been uh, doing what she's doing, but we have known each other for a long time, worked together on projects, um, love working with their fabrics, of course. So I'm excited. She will be joining us in the 11 a.m. Central Time session, so in the second session. In our third session, we will be visiting with Pat Sloan, the amazing Pat Sloan. Again, Pat, I've known for years, uh, a designer, prolific designer, author, uh, and just an all over amazing person. And I'm sure you have seen some of her posts. She has an amazing Facebook group and other groups online. I was actually in her first ever, I think it was a Yahoo group or something like that, but um, it was amazing. She's amazing and I'm looking forward to chatting with her. Then we have a, a prolific designer, Doug Lico, uh, very prolific. He puts out a lot, has put out a lot of content, designed many patterns and published multiple books already, even for his young age. Doug is a Minnesotan, like I can call myself right now. And so I'm looking forward to chatting with him. And he has a brand new book that is, uh, looks really good. And he's going to give us a peek on that and some other things. Um, and then in our 
last segment of the day, we're going to visit with Lisa Alexander. Now, Lisa works for Moda Fabrics and has been there for many, many years. I've known Lisa for many, many years, and, and thanks to her, I'm able to work with amazing Moda Fabrics all the time. And, but she's not just, she's also a designer. She has written books, and she is an amazing quilter and designer. And a scrap lover like me she likes it scrappy if we can put more fabrics into a quilt we will and i so we're kind of scrap sisters like that and i love that so can't wait to chat with all these folks and i hope you will enjoy some more conversations so think up some questions so before we go into our demo of the first steps in the pattern um, I want to make sure that you know this is a demo. So do not stress out and think that you're supposed to be doing everything with me at the same time. I'm going to demonstrate it. So kind of imagine that you're in a class. The teacher um, is going to demonstrate the steps. So as a good student, you're going to have your pattern handy. So it's really good to kind of have your pattern handy and make notes on the pattern or, or kind of watch, watch along and read through it as I'm doing the demo. Uh, you can always go back and watch the video, so don't stress on it right now. Um, I'm going to be showing you different tools. So with this pattern, you can use any of the three larger stripology rulers and also just regular basic rulers. So uh, something like a big uh, 24 by 6 or 8 or whatever. So I'm going to show you both tools or all of the tools. So if you only have one of those tools, to limit the confusion, I recommend that you just pay specific attention to when I'm showing you the tool that you have. And don't try too hard to keep up on the other ones because that doesn't really pertain to you. Does that make sense? I'm just, I'm just trying to make this day go uh, more enjoyable and less stress. So just focus on the tools that you have and we will be good. All right, so we are gonna get into our demonstration. So I'm going to flip it to the overhead camera. So first, first thing we're going to do, and you saw this in your pattern at the top, right above that first step, it said we have to split our 10 inch squares into two equal groups because we're going to be making a block A and a block B. Now, I already seen a lot of questions on how to split your fabrics if in the group. Um, so if you have fabrics, you know a lot of different fabrics for the one that i did i had a lot of different fabrics and so it really does not matter at all how you split it into two groups you can have even colors if you have a lot of uh, different colors you can kind of try and do the same amount of colors in each group which is a great idea if you have for example if you cut your fabrics from a fat quarter and you have two of each print or you have four of each print if you cut them from half yards you can put two in one stack and two in other, another stack. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. So do not stress on it. Do not take too much time with it. Just the only thing you have to make sure you have to have even numbers in each group because we don't want to cut too many uh, for one block and then be short on the other. Now, if you have fewer fabrics, one thing I wanted to mention, if you have fewer fabrics, if you cut everything from yardage, so for example, you only have six different prints or like eight different prints so another good thing is because we're going to be alternating the blocks later on uh, if you have fewer prints sometimes you can just use four prints in one group and the other four in the other group and that way you will all, never touch the same fabrics because you're alternating blocks so that is something to think about only if you have fewer fabrics okay so now we're gonna get started. So start with this and then take your B stack of 10 inch squares and put it aside somewhere that you're not gonna accidentally uh, get into it and cut it. So we're gonna start with uh, using my XL ruler. So the Stripology XL and the Stripology squared have the ex almost the exact same lines and they are the exact same length. So everything I show you for the XL pertains to the squared. So you can use either one, it's gonna be exactly the same on those two. So those are the ones I'm gonna start with and I'm just gonna use the XL. So what you wanna do is just take your squares and you can stack up as many fabrics as you are comfortable cutting at the same time. And that could be two, 
four, six, eight. If you have a 45 millimeter cutter, I don't recommend more than about six layers of fabric if you're using the rulers. So stack up as many as you're comfortable cutting and you can always start smaller and then kind of increase it. So then what we're gonna do, another tool that is gonna be really helpful today are my ruler stickers. So I use them to mark up my rulers when you're doing a lot of the same cuts. So I'm gonna show you where I've put my arrows this morning. I have, we are going to be lining up the seven inch slit on the ruler. So I have put this blue arrow here on the seven inch on the top and the bottom. I know I have a pink one on top and there's a reason for that because my pink ones are gonna be my cut lines. So the other stickers I'm gonna be putting is I'm gonna be putting stickers, we're gonna be cutting on the four. So I'm gonna put a pink one there and then we're gonna cut on the seven and then we're also gonna be cutting on the 10. So I'm gonna put an arrow on my 10. So four, seven, and 10. So pink is my cut arrows, blue are my line up arrows. So we're gonna be lining this up. We're gonna line the seven inch slit on the two opposite corners of the squares. So what I like to do is use this black line here on the bottom, where's the zero, and just line the bottom of the, the tip of the square right there and it's right on that slit. And then you will see when you line it here, you will see you have a diagonal line going, dotted diagonal line going, going up here to the left. You can align that line with the stacked squares. So then you know it's aligned and actually then automatically this is gonna be lined up at the top here. You see there's a black line extending the slit so you can make sure that black line is lined up with the other tip of that square. So now I know I have my positioning correct. And now we're gonna make cuts through the four, seven, and 10. So I'm gonna make my first cut through the four. Now when I make my seven, you will notice that the slit does not go all the way, so I'm not gonna be cutting through the stack, which is fine. I'm just gonna cut as far as I can, and then I'm gonna cut through the 10. So now, I am actually gonna remove this before, just this one little um, stack of triangles here, but because we're gonna slide the ruler upwards a little bit, and the reason I remove that is because when you have multiple fabric stacked up, you can kind of, there's a ledge here. You can make sure that everything is lined up still. And then I'm just gonna go back into my seven inch slit and finish that cut all the way. So it's just a little, about an inch, half an inch to an inch that we needed to finish that cut. So now our pieces are, we have two trapezoids and two triangles. So these are all gonna be the same size and shape so they can be stacked up this way. So now I'm gonna show you if you have the original Stripology ruler. And there's a little trick that you can use because the original is quite a bit shorter than the squared and the XL. So cutting them halfway, the squares, um, is gonna be a little bit hard. So I have come up with this little trick, is I took my squares and I just pressed them in half. So you have a fold, and um, this is actually folding them like this has a secondary feature that is gonna be helpful as well. And then you can stack them up. So I just use any line on my cutting mat to make sure that the tip of the triangle is there. And then of course, using another line here to line up my fold folds like this. And if you wanna do multiples, you can stack them. So the next one, I would just line up with the next line and then still make sure that the tip of my triangles are lined up with that um, the line on the cutting mat. And then you can, you can kind of debate how many you wanna stack up at the same time. But the markings on the ruler are the same as I did with the XL. I'm just gonna line up, you can really line up any horizontal line on the fold of these, of now triangles of the squares, and then making sure they're all straight. And then you, as you can see, I have an arrow right here on the seven inch slit to point at this tip, making sure everything is lined up. And now I can make my same cuts through the four, through the seven, and then through the 10. 
and you have the exact same units. So you have, a, have trapezoids and then you have the triangles. So it's all the same, you just have a little fold, which is actually gonna be quite helpful um, once we start sewing. I'm gonna show you that later on. So now I'm gonna show you what if you have a, just a regular ruler. So I have just my 24 by eight and a half, and here are our squares. Again, you can stack up as many as you want, that you as many as you're comfortable cutting and in my instructions so I will give you all the instructions for the stripology rulers and then I also have cutting with regular rulers so make sure you just follow this when you are using the regular rulers because these units for the stripology are going to be very confusing um, so just look at this so first cut we're going to do is just corner to corner cutting our squares in half So then we are going to make two more cuts because we want to make our cuts to make our trapezoid and triangle. Um, and in this, for block A, we're going to cut them three inches from that cut. So what I actually went ahead and did, I put arrows on that three inch line on my ruler. So then it's really easy and fast to line things up and make that cut. And then we can do the same with the other stack and make that cut and so we have all the same units as with the stripology rulers we have our our trapezoids and our triangles so once you have that cut uh, one more step that we're going to do with our 15 inch two and a half by 15 inch rectangles so all of those some are some of you are using a single fabric some of you are using a uh, just the same fabrics as you are using for your square so whatever you're using you um, these were cut into 15 inch long rectangles what you want to do with those is also split them in half so we're going to use half of them for block a and then half of them for block b but what i went ahead and did is i took them to my iron i folded them in half and i pressed a crease in the middle so you have a little guideline crease right here in the middle that is really gonna be helpful as we move on. So now it's time to start sewing on our block block A. So we're gonna start with um, step two. So we're just gonna start by mixing up all of our triangles and, and trapezoids. So I have my stacks of trapezoids and we are just going, this is not gonna be, um, we're just gonna mix up the colors. So grab a trapezoid and then a triangle of a different color and the way we, these go is that these have all been cut from the same size. So let me show you. They've all been cut from the same size. So as you lay the, I like to have the bigger piece on the bottom and then my triangle goes on top. And this is just gonna be tip to tip. And sometimes when we're working with like pre-cuts, like uh, layer cakes, Sometimes these squares aren't going to be the same size. So sometimes your triangle might be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but don't worry about it. Just kind of center it on there. And then we're just going to sew. If you made that crease in the middle, of course, that's what can be really, really helpful if you made that crease, because you can just match up those creases and then you know right away that they're centered. But uh, otherwise I just eyeball it like this. I pop maybe one pin in there and that's all you need we're going to take it straight over to the sewing machine and then we're just going to sew so we want to keep our um, seam a scant quarter inch and if you have a little leader and ender project going i have my little rectangles here that I am just gonna do as my leaders and enders and kind of having a bonus quilt done. Um, this is one of my free patterns called Tony that you can find on my website. So now I can just clip um, the, the parts that I'm using and leave this hanging so I'm not wasting any thread. I'm actually piecing a bonus project with that extra thread. So now we have our pieced unit here. I move this out of the way. So what you want to do is you want to you want to sew all of these. 
So depending on the size of your quilt that you're making, you're going to be making 24, 48, 80, and 100 units like that from your trapezoids and your triangles. And then you take it to the iron and you want to just press it this way so the seams are towards that triangle. So you, then we should have all of these different units with mixed up colors. Um, just press this way and you'll see that this is quite shorter, but don't worry, we're gonna square everything up in the end. So uh, if this looks really weird to you, just relax. Not a problem, that's exactly how it's supposed to look. So now that we have all of our units from step two, we're gonna grab our accent strips, the middle strips, the two and a half by 15s that you folded in half. And we're gonna sew a strip to half of your units like this because we made, they're gonna go on each side of that strip. So we're gonna take the first ones. What I do, I just fold this in half. I make a little crease with my finger and that is gonna be my mark that I am gonna line this fold that I pressed. So it's easy to align it like this and then again, I just use one pin. You can use more, of course, if you want to, but one pin is good for me. And then I just sew this on here. And we're gonna be pressing the A blocks. You wanna be pressing the A blocks towards the middle strip. So I will take this and press it. I will sew it on one side of all of the units and then press. I don't sew both sides and try and press because we're gonna have a much nicer uh, straight line here if you press after each time. And it's okay if you press, I can still see my little uh, crease that I folded in the beginning. But as you sew this on for the first time, we're gonna be using, of course, our rule that if you followed our Elvira quilt along, we I taught you a little rule that, that's called Bob. That means, bias on the bottom because this is going to be a bias edge these are not bias edges we want to keep the bias on the bottom it helps keep our unit stable so bob is going to be playing with us today we're going to keep him on the bottom and then we are to this step and now same thing we're just going to find a different colors that we're going to put on the other side of that unit and it's going to work exactly the same way we're on to step four, we fold it in half, we make that little crease, and then we match it up with this one. If you ironed it out, you can always just fold it and find it again. We're gonna match it up, pin it in place, and then so, um, and then we're gonna press it towards that middle strip. So it's gonna look like this. And this is our block A. Now, yes, it looks very ragged around the edges, but do not worry about it. This is going to be looking like perfection once we have it trimmed up. But I'm not going to show you the trimming until later on in the day in our session three. So you're just going to leave them like this. So now one more thing that I wanted to mention, and that is since we are working kind of like you were in a class, when I teach a class, if we were to work on a project at home following a pattern, of course, we would go through step one with all of our units and then move on to the next step. But when I teach classes, I like my students to be able to go through all of the steps in class so that they have some blocks done of, of both blocks and have it done so they can then go home and replicate it easily because they've already gone through the steps. So why don't you do that today? to release some of that stress and not think you have to make all of your blocks between the sessions. So start with maybe eight or 12 blocks. So that means you can, you can cut all your units, but then just work on 12 blocks at a time, 10 to 12 blocks at a time. And then you're able to totally keep up and, you know, kind of go, you know, go with us throughout the day. Now, if you get to a point, you still have half an hour, you just make more. So, uh, but it's just a suggestion. So then once we meet again, you have some of these already done and you're ready to kind of go into making some of block B. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So let me check some of your questions and um, see if we have any, any questions. 
Uh, thanks again for joining me. We have a lot of people. I think we're setting records uh, in the amount of people. Uh, thanks for the Bob tip. Bob is a great tip and it's gonna be very helpful. Sometimes Bob works two ways. So it's bias on the bottom, but sometimes it's also bigger on the bottom. If you end up with something that's a little bigger than the other one, Bob works. All right, so um, did you notice any questions, Mr. Producer? Nothing major? And not, lots of great comments, that's good. All right, so looks pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so too. I think it's pretty straightforward, so um, very easy. I think we should um, maybe pull some giveaway names. Don't you think that's a good idea? So we'll be both pulling names from our Facebook feed and our um, from YouTube as well. People are giving my my new baby Lock a little love. So I've called her, I've named her. Her name is Sola. It's Solaris, so I think Sola is a really, really good name. Um, so I love her. Yes, I love Sola. She's working great and um, I'll share some a bunch of features on her later, but I, I'm just loving it so far. Okay. Everybody is really with us. That is great. That's fabulous. So um, we will... Where's the playlist? Oh, <laughs> somebody's asking for the playlist. Um, go to the blog. So G Quilt Designs and then the upper you know, menu, there's a blog button. Click on that and there's a specific blog post Hope Quilt Along, click on that, and that uh, kind of towards the bottom, you'll find the playlist. So you click on that, it will take you to Spotify. If you do it on your phone, it will take you um, to the app if you have it downloaded. Um, if you are on a computer, you, it opens up in a browser. So whatever works. Um, what is <laughs> uh, what is it about the quarantine quilt along with sparkly fabrics and me? Elvira and Hope are sparkly. Of course, everything is better with sparkles. I totally get it, um, but I want to maybe while we while we are kind of letting Mr. Honey producer uh, doing the random generator and finding those giveaway names. I got four names. You got four names. Are we ready to announce them? Okay, so our winners are whoop whoop. We have Dovey Bennett. We have Betty Boop. We have Sherry Craft and Tony Rubin. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you. Congrats, congrats. You'll be getting some goodies. So we will reach out to you and um, get your addresses and everything if you see this. And you can always just email me and send me your information or send us a message on Facebook and we will make sure to connect and get your address and everything. So congratulations. We will have giveaways every single session. And I think everybody's good. They got their fabric separated and woohoo, uh, no questions. Well, maybe there are, but we are not seeing them at first glance, but I will go through them after we um, get off the air. But I think it's just time to get everybody sewing, right? Ah, that's exciting. So as far as snacks, I'm gonna go have a little snack and I think maybe is 11 o'clock too early for uh, a Hope cocktail? Maybe not. So I think uh, we are good as of now. How many people are on today? Uh, how many people are on? I, I, about 3,000. Yeah, I think about 3,000 on Facebook. We have more on YouTube. So uh, hopefully we're getting up in the 4,000s that are watching us live, which is amazing because a lot of the world is still sleeping. So uh, that is really fabulous. And I can't say enough about and thanking you enough uh, for joining me. And I will see you back here in, what is it, an hour and a half? So you've got some time to get some, some A blocks done. And uh, so that's it for us. I'll see you in a little bit. Mm -hmm.